Hi, today we're going to talk about FACPs, or Fire Alarm Control Panels. Hi, my name is Craig Mashad and I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to install our notification and our initiation circuits into an MS2 Firelight Panel. They're very simple. One thing you have to remember is anything that you are not using, so if you're using a circuit not being used, you have to install what we call a dummy resistor that is 4.7K same resistors that you would install at the end of the line. If, you add that, if you're going to add a circuit in, you take that resistor out and you put it at the end of your line. Okay? So if you go into a fire line panel that's already existing and you're going to add another zone, then guess what? You take that, that resistor out and you put it at the end. Every, res, every initiation device does not get a resistor, only the end of the line. That's why we call them an EOL, end of line resistor. Let me walk you through what an FACP actually does. Okay, so here is a MS2 Firelight uh, Fire Alarm Panel or Fire Alarm Control Panel. It's a conventional panel, which means it doesn't tell you exactly where the problem is, unlike an addressable, which we will talk about in another video. This here is a very basic conventional panel. It'll tell you what zone or what area is, needs to be protected. It's basically a, for small buildings that you just want to know if there's an alarm. It doesn't matter where it is in the building. It, the notification devices go off and you get your people out. Okay? So let's talk about it. So what we have to do is we have to remember we have to get power. Now, down here we actually have our high voltage. We actually feed this panel with 120 volts. So our 120 volts goes to a panel, turn it on, it's gotta be on its own dedicated breaker, nothing can be controlled, nothing can be on the fire alarm, and if you're working in a commercial building, you need to put a breaker lock on to lock the breaker on. It does allow it to trip, but it doesn't allow it to be turned off. The next thing you need to know is your battery connections. Okay, your battery connections, you're going to need 24 volts, so you're going to need two 12-volt batteries in series. Here we have an existing power that we can add for somewhere else. And then we have our notification. This is where our notification devices go to, which means there's no power on this until we actually activate an alarm. Then we have our two circuits, because this is a two-zone panel, hence the MS2. This is a two-zone panel. And you can see there's already a dummy resistor in because we're only using one initiating circuit. Okay? We also have normally open and normally closed alarm circuits that we can also use for other devices. Then we get down in here. We'll go over this as we start um, the demonstration and showing you how those devices work. We have a fire alarm, we have a supervisor, we, we have a trouble, and we have a maintenance. Okay? We're going to be primarily concerned with our fire alarm and our troubles. Okay. We have a, a, a list of information that we have down below that's telling us what our issues are. And then we have our reset, alarm silence, and we can enable and disable any zone we would like. So let's put it all together. Okay, so now let's wire it. First, we'll start with the notification. Okay, you're going to strip the wire the exact same way you would for your device. I'm just going to use your strippers, give it a little pop, take the drag line. You want to go up, you want to keep a couple inches of insulation free. Now 
Now you just trim the wire down, strip them. Again, we're only going 3 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to land it. Positive and negative. Remember, polarity is very important here. Make it look as neat as you can. Now we're going to do the initiation, which we're going to use zone one. Same thing with uh, polarity. Strip the wires again, three eighths of an inch. Okay, so now let's test our system and see how it works. I'm going to put the camera over in the corner so I can show you that when I use the pull station, you can actually see the notification device and actually see what the fire alarm panel is doing. So now the system is set. The devices that we wired in a previous video are now tied into our FACP. Now we're going to test it. So what we're going to do is we're going to test a smoke detector with a can of smoke. The alarm's going to go off. We're going to reset the panel, we're going to test the pull station, and then we're going to reset the panel and let it all clear up. Here with some smoke, it picked it up. Zone one, fire alarm. You hit the acknowledge, you hit alarm silence, and then you hit reset. Now, before I hit reset, I'm going to take the head out, I'm going to blow the smoke out of it, and then I'm going to reset the panel. Okay, now let's test the pull station. Again, hit acknowledge, alarm silence, and then reset. This video helped you on how a fire alarm control panel is actually wired. They're very basic and very simple. You just have to remember that initiation and notification are two separate circuits. In an MS, a Firelight MS2, you could have two zone circuits for initiation and one 
zone circuit for notification. If this video helped you, do me a favor, give me a like. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, have a great day and be safe.